In this video, I'll go over a quick PE problem on how to classify a building diaphragm. I'll explain what a building diaphragm is and how to classify it as either flexible or rigid. I'll also be using IBC 2018 as the reference code to find the requirements for that classification. And if you get some value from this video, please uh, like and subscribe and consider hitting that bell so that you get notified when I post new content. All right, let's dive in. So before we even get to our problem, let's understand what a diaphragm is. So if, you have a, if we have a building, whether it's in a seismic zone or not, oops, let me go back here. This building, let's say you have a foundation and then we have many floors here. This building we will be subjected to wind loads or earthquake loads, some sort of lateral load. Let's say that this load is wind or seismic. And a diaphragm is just the floor of the floors of the building. And they are, they are, the floors are called diaphragms when they transfer these lateral loads into the main wind force resisting system of the building. So what does that look like? So let's say I draw, I draw a section here, AA, pardon my, my drawing skills, but this would be my section AA here. Now, in our problem, we have shear walls, which are these, let's say these are concrete walls that they go full height in the building. So a diaphragm, a floor is considered a diaphragm when it, it acts like a beam transferring this lateral load here onto the building, onto the building shear walls. So that's what a diaphragm is. Now, now that we know what a diaphragm is, let's see what our problem asks. The problem says the displacements of the two corners of the wood diaphragm at A and B due to wind forces are calculated as 0.2 and 0.4 inches, respectively. The in-plane deflection of the diaphragm is 0.9 inches. The best classification of the diaphragm is either flexible, flexible, and torsionally, torsionally ir irregular, rigid, or rigid and torsionally irregular. So, first of all, what does the code say about diaphragm classification. In our case, we're going to look into IBC 2018 because that's the code that's referenced in the PE currently. And there is a section here that I, I'll pull up right here that will explain exactly what that is. So section 1604.4 under analysis, it states that a diaphragm is rigid for the purpose of distribution of story shear and torsional moment when the, the lateral deformation of the diaphragm is less than or equal to two times the average story drift. So what does that, what does that all uh, mean? First of all, we need to find, compare the lateral deformation of the diaphragm. Let's, let's call that delta max. And we need to compare that with two times the average story drift. So it's how much each floor is going to deflect at the shear, not at the shear wall, the average between the two shear walls on each floor. So let's call that small delta average. So the statement says that if it's less, if the max, the maximum diaphragm deflection is less than two times the average, so two times, if it's less than two times, then our diaphragm, oops, our diaphragm is considered rigid. And if it's greater than that, 
if the maximum deflection is greater than 2 times the average story drift, then it would be the opposite. The diaphragm wouldn't be rigid, so it is flexible. We're not going to get into semi-rigid diaphragms into this um, example, and our problem does not include semi-rigid diaphragms into the classification. So I'm going to write it out here. If my maximum diaphragm deflection is greater than or equal to two times the average story drift, it is flexible. All right, so let's find those parameters for our problem. We know that the in-plane deflection of the diaphragm is 0.9 inches, so we already know what our delta max is. is equal to 0 0.9 inches. Now what is 2 times the average story drift? So let's look into deflection at point A is 0 0.2 inches and deflection at point B is 0 0.4 inches. So if we were to draw a line oh, almost a, should be a straight line this would be my average right here and we know that then that our delta average is equal to 0 0.4 plus 0 0.2 inches it's got our units in there divided by 2 now what is 2 times delta average so if I'm if I just slap on a 2 times here and 2 times 2 on the other side I know that 2 times my average story drift will be cancel cancel it will be equal to 0 0.6 inches so let me just draw what the diaphragm deflected shape would look like in our diagram so our diaphragm would deflect something like this going from one point to the other and then would want to deflect like that oops probably not all the way here but you get the point that would deflect on the bottom and at the top and then here would be my delta max max so our delta max is 0 0.9 which is greater than two times greater than two times small delta average so our diaphragm at the end of the day it is there you go flexible now is it flexible and torsionally irregular as we discussed before if the diaphragm is flexible it's not going to transfer any any moment to the shear walls it's literally going to be just the tributary um, area for of each shear wall that will receive the load and what I mean by that is this wall would receive half of the load and this other wall would receive the other half of the load so literally if this was a beam whether each support is my shear wall and I have a distributed load it would literally just be the reactions of each support on this side here R1 and R2 and that wraps up our problem let's circle our answer answer is A I hope we enjoyed this video and as I said if you want to keep receiving more videos hit that bell and like and subscribe if you'd like thank you